Hi, welcome to Den and Denim. I've got a special video for you today. I'm going to review every 501 year ever. I'll give you a couple of factoids about each pair and then I've got eight minute videos describing each pair in detail. I'm gonna start with the pre 501s in what is possibly 1853, but most likely 1873. And the first Levi's riveted pants, the orange duck pants, made of duck cotton, just like canvas, strong as denim, but in an orange material. These are the first riveted pants that happen. And then we also have in 1873, the first blue jean that occurs. Circa 1875, we have the oldest, oldest Precious Grimes, a vault piece that is from the late 1870s that shows the patch on the right side. It's pretty close to a 501 right now, but not yet there. The 1878 pantaloons, curved pockets, no suspender buttons, only a cinch, white lined inside waist. It's basically like a pair of 1910 spring liner pants banged a pair of oldest oldest and this was born. I love them. If anyone else won, let me know. The 1879s, the first unofficial 501 but not really. They're close to a pair of 501s in a lot of ways. They do come with a nice leather bag. The 1880s circa pair, the Nevadas or the Napaves. The leather patch is in the middle. You have a tool pocket, sometimes a higher watch pocket than usual, sometimes so on buttons with the Napaves. 1886 and the Levi's patent has expired so they have to reissue it calling it unofficially the 501s but not yet marking it as such 1890s the first true 501 you have the first leather horse patch calling it the 501 Another Circa pair are the Spur Bites from 1891 to 1900. The 501s from 1901 introduced the first second back pocket, an item usefully needed and constantly requested by customers. The 1906 Bunkhouse are a limited edition pair that pay tribute to the 1906 fire and destruction and recreation of what Levi's company had been at the time. 1915 is when Levi's started using Cone Mills denim and for a hundred years they used the company until they went extinct. It's also synthetic indigo dye instead of natural, giving it a darker look for once. The 1917s come in this unique cool box which makes it easier to store otherwise identical to the 1915s. 1918s are most likely a pair of 1917s, although only come in a special edition known as the Homer Campbells, a vault piece recreated. 1922s are the first with belt loops, and you can also get all three fasteners with them. They're available in a 201 and a 501. 201s have a cotton patch. The general 1920s pair gets you belt loops and wet line selvage. Very hard to find are the 1927 501s, which are the first red line selvage. They're also the last to feature a pair of them instead of a pair of Levi's, even though you'll probably find them made with a pair of Levi's as the first. That really started in 1928. The 1930s general pair gives you a patched on hobo look. 1933s feature the NRA tag, which is an illegal thing, unconstitutional, but basically the government can 
retake these if they want to. They're the easiest to find that have all three fasteners. The 1937 501 is the first with a red tab of any kind being the big E. It also has covered rivets and creates the first flasher. The suspender buttons are removed and it has a cinch, the last pair with the cinch you can buy. The 1944 501 jeans have printed arcuate, sometimes upside down or higher than usual or even absent, but they also have patterned pockets, sometimes in blue and white stripe, multicolored stripe, the green herringbone being the true historic feature, but also an argyle and even a jellyfish pattern. The 1947 501 is 100% classic. It has a tight fit, it has a leather patch, no extra historical nonsense, no retro features like bar tacks or paper patch, just 100% classic perfection with a tight fit. The 1954 501s, often with a Z, are the first with a zipper and the only LVC 501s you can buy with a zipper, but still that classic 1947 fit. The 1955 501s are the first with a paper patch and the first with a double-sided red tab. They're a very loose fit, probably the loosest that they have made. Very easy to find along with the 54s and 47s, all very easy to find. The 1966 are the first with bar tacks, so there's no rivets in the back to scratch up your furniture or get undone. It doesn't have the XX on the tag, on the paper patch, but I really think it has this perfect fit that really soaks up to your body in a lot of ways when you soak them in water. The 1971s are a first in so many ways with the tear-off tag, the small E. They have a high waist fit, but they're only available with the golden tickets. So there's only 500 pairs available of these. More easily available are the 1976, the first small E, even though that happened in 1971 tear off tag even though it happened in 1970 but they have a medium rise and one of the coolest special editions ever 1978s are an even lower rise than the 1976s and one of the last classic pairs but still very retro the 1978s are the only levi's to come in 14 ounce denim which will go up to 17 ounces once you wash it the 1983s are the last salvage year and actually hard to find within the LBC line collection. The recently made 1904s are the first non-selvage and they come in different colors. Gray, black, unhemmed, and pre-shrunk white. There's also a cool spiderweb edition, but I'll talk more about all these in my videos about eight minute videos detailing each year's pair with all the special editions. I'm Den and this has been Den and Denim. Like and subscribe. I've got many more videos to come. If you think I missed a pair within here, let me know in the Den and Denim.